This is better than you were expecting. Why? Yeah, yeah, it, it is better because we're seeing uh, what this report shows is an uptick in the retail and the leisure and hospitality sector. Um, that was the sector that I was most fearful of. We are down 4 million jobs and in that sector. So this is good news because leisure and hospitality is directly <coughs> related to the pandemic. Uh, the improving health conditions, the boosting of the vaccine rollout, and hopefully con showing consumer confidence about going back to services again. So I actually read this as very good news um, in terms of what it projects for the economic recovery going forward. What is a bit dismaying is the decline that we saw in the goods sector, because that had been the previous performer. Even with the January uh, cold weather, it was a little surprising to us to see construction jobs in Jan January fall. We're still seeing some weakness there, even though housing, the housing market has been going gangbusters. So I think the punchline here is to look where the jobs are being created. We know uh, from Federal Reserve analysis uh, that was presented a couple of weeks ago that the jobs are being created where high income people live, uh, not so much where the low income jobs are. And this retail number is a good start saying that maybe now we can see more low income jobs, um, low paying jobs that were lost. Those vulnerable jobs are coming back and hopefully we'll also see some wage growth in tandem with that rehiring. All right, I'm throwing out the rule book, Kate. Why was it, uh, why was it better? So look, this should be great news for the market or at least for the overall economy. You know, we're getting a number that's basically double what consensus was projecting for February offsetting, as I was mentioned before, all of the bad news that may have come or the slowdown in hiring as a result of the cold snap across most of the country. That should be great news. But, you know, if you kind of just watch what the market is doing right now, what we see in the 10 year, what we see in terms of the futures, you know, we're once again getting this message from the market that they don't believe the Fed is going to continue to maintain policy, regardless of what Powell said yesterday and what Governor Brainerd said earlier this week, they don't believe the Fed is going to maintain this policy uh, for very long. In fact, if we get another round of fiscal stimulus and the vaccine rollout goes as well as many of us are expecting, you know, we're going to be in an environment where growth is going to be meaningfully accelerating over future quarters. And so I think we're still going to be in a sort of a tough spot in a rotation within the equity market and in some cases a decline in the overall market as everyone tries to understand when the liftoff point is for the Fed. You know, Rick, I have a spy cam, so I have the entire Zoom uh, conference. I, I'm watching the entire time, and, and, and you've got something to say. Um, I can see you. I'm watching. See, nope, I see you. You took issue with a few it's, things. It's really, it's unbelievable to me. First of all, when things are closed, they can't improve, okay? When things are open, they improve. So to think that, you know, Anything but opening up is going to lead to a strong economy. You know, when I hear things like, oh, you know, the economy is improving. No, it's either mostly closed or reopening. And that's important. Words matter. And in terms of Fed's commitment to low rates is going to prevent a taper tantrum. Come on. What we have now is just a taper tantrum in slow motion. We're at 160 in tens. We're up 20 basis points on the week. And they can't prevent these negative feedback loops when they remove all the stimulative policy, because what they end up doing is dragging their feet, and not removing it at all. Think about Janet Yellen. Think about Ben Bernanke. But ultimately, ultimately, you know, I understand Jason's comments and all those checks going out are important, whether they're saved or spent, they're important. But whether we pass this one point nine trillion dollar monster that has a lot more to do with issues well outside of COVID or not, we're still going to have a seven, eight, nine, ten percent economy in 2021. If you don't pass that big supercharged debt laden package, the difference would be not in the GDP numbers, but in the stock market numbers, in the risk asset numbers, which are already biting investors that were tantalized by this to begin with. You could call it the democratization of the markets. In my opinion, many of those customers wouldn't have been able to open accounts 20 years ago when we used yep. to do better due diligence. And I understand things have changed. But in the final analysis, 
what's going on here is going to be like a throwing a match on a gasoline fire. And when they pass this, we're going to be stockpiling gasoline for the next nine quarters to continually dump in. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.